I'm the operator with my pocket calculator. Hi all, this is Sean from Time and Talk. Today I wanted to make a video about this watch, which is my newest acquisition. First of all, if you haven't already subscribed, it would mean a hell of a lot if you would do so, as it helps to support the channel and obviously uh, gives me a bit of a boost. So this watch is the Seiko A904-5000. And basically I picked this up because I was looking for something a little bit different really. And I started to search for Seiko digital watches, vintage ones. I'd never really had one before. I just thought it was something a little bit different to the you know, the 80s Casio watches that you see everyone wearing and just something with a little bit of history really and add, adding something to the, the collection that I have because I've never, I've never tried one before and that's what I like to do, I like to experience new watches that are completely different to the ones that I have as opposed to just reviewing the same old watches all the time. So this video is going to be about this watch, what I think of it, and also about vintage in general and thinking about some tips on how to buy vintage watches as well as a brief history of digital watches. So this is the Seiko website. So in 1973, Seiko released the first ever LCD watch. And then in 75, the first ever multifunctional digital watch. And we can see some watches that we're probably familiar with on this screen, it's the Seiko website. And then in 1982, the first watch TV, which meant I think you had to carry around that receiver. In 83, the first voice note. See the Jujaro there. And in 1984, the first ever computer watch, which is hilarious if you can see on the screen, it could store 2000 characters, which is <laughs> it's absolutely pathetic by today's standards, but you know. So here's the watch. So I picked this up because, you know, it's it's something a little bit different, but it's also really nice to wear. It's It's got quite a funky bracelet, which is a little bit like a Jubilee bracelet. And I think it looks pretty, pretty nice on the wrist and it's a pretty nice watch. I bought it on eBay, paid around 50 pound for it. And it was very, very gunky when I, when I picked it up. It was disgusting. There was all sorts of dirt in it. So I've, I've had to go at cleaning it. It's by no means perfect, but you know, I think it's pretty decent because this particular watch wouldn't have been that expensive, I don't think, when it was bought. So the fact that it's in relatively good condition, you can see the, the Seiko sign on the clasp. It's not the best quality clasp in the world. And particularly, I had trouble sizing the bracelet because it's one of those folded link bracelets and there's all sorts of disgusting gunk inside the links. But... You know, it's, it's, it's pretty decent for me. Essentially, the watch has a couple of functions. So it's got an alarm. It's got a stopwatch, hence the chronograph. And it's got, I think it's an annual calendar, to be honest. Hit me in the comments if you, if you know exactly what constitutes an annual calendar. But it knew, for example, that the month of February only had 29 days in it. This is me trying to show you the light. It has a light, but it's absolutely pathetic. You cannot, you just cannot, cannot see um, the light. It, either it wasn't very good, the technology wasn't great when it was invented. As I said, the, this came out first in 1986 or over the years, it's just, it's just um, ceased to work properly. So here are the specs. So it's 33 millimeters, lug to lug is 38.5 millimeters and the lugs are 18 it's really tiny by today's standards but i i like the way these vintage style digital watches were to be honest it would be my preferred size of watch i've got a tiny wrist and i really really like the way they were so i mean this watch for me is, is really great you can get something vintage that's quite interesting Got a bit of history to it. As I've said, you know, Seiko have got that huge history, but even in the in the digital watch world, they released the first ever digital, well, LCD watch in 1973, which is fantastic, really. I think it's nice looking, I think it's cool. And I'm really happy with it. And you can't get much these days for 
50 pounds in relation to watches so the fact that you can get a watch such as this I think it's brilliant can't really complain about things like the bracelet and the fact that it feels a little bit cheap because this watch is, is an affordable watch it is a watch that wasn't designed to be by any means a, a luxury product so it just got me thinking about vintage in general these are my two vintage pieces and I made a video about the Omega on the right essentially saying that I probably made a, a mistake buying it because the dial wasn't great I bought it on eBay and it's led to quite a bit bit of discussion actually in the, in the comments of the video I'll link to the video and it's been relatively popular on the channel and got me thinking about you know what is vintage for a start because this Seiko is from the 80s late 80s early 90s so what constitutes the idea of vintage but obviously you know it perhaps 80s 70s 90s are underappreciated really in terms of vintage and you can perhaps get a little bit more for your money show you the dial there of the Omega and, and I think over the years what's happened is water damage has taken a lot of the indices off and the, the, the ink on the dial or perhaps it's been cleaned but in other areas really I think it's a it's a really decent buy but it does bother me a little bit to be honest that I bought something that's not really perfect and I think in the sense of, of buying vintage my main tips really would be first of all you've got to do your research you've got to shop around you've got to know what you're buying and, and what the watch is supposed to look like particularly if it's if it's a really old watch also if you do want a bargain something more affordable I think a good thing would be to look for watches which are not as popular a little bit more niche and which maybe people wouldn't be looking for as much so then you might get something a bit more affordable so I mean I know the, the watches are in no way near I know the watches on the screen are not comparable but the fact that you can get a vintage Seiko for 50 pounds and an Omega would set you back a lot more shows you that perhaps there's, there's, there's more affordable watches to be had in that area and another broad tip really would be if you're going to compromise on the originality of the watch fine but if you absolutely do not want to compromise in that area then I would say either you don't want to be compromising on price so you want to go somewhere other than eBay and you want to go to a dealer you want to go to someone who can guarantee that, that watch is original or like I said you want to be doing your research and you want to really really know that what you're buying is the real deal so in, in terms of this this watch the, the Seiko you can see it on the wrist here for me it wears really well extremely well I really like the way these wear as I've said the fact that they're quite small and quite funky looking quite quirky and I think digital watches of this kind have really took off in people who, who do want that kind of quirky retro 80s look okay so tell me in the comments what you think of the watch um the vintage seiko and vintage in general tell me what your thoughts are on how to buy a good vintage watch thanks very much for watching bye bye